to the Women's Network. I'm Elke and I'm your host. I want to invite you to a great show today. It's not only important, but it's very, very, uh, um, well, yeah, it's very important that you watch it. So for those of you who want to write a few things down, like a phone number and some other information, please get yourself a pen and uh, some paper because you don't want to miss a minute. You want to watch the whole show. And our topic today is Alzheimer's. Now, it's a, it's a very, uh, very, what can I say? It's a tough, tough topic. We all sort of have to think about it one way or another because we might have relatives. It might even come on us. It's something that we don't really want to discuss. But it's so important, as I said earlier, we, we need to know about it. And uh, like I said, please get yourself pen and paper. And uh, we have some great information for you. So write it down and don't leave the set. So today, I want to introduce you to a wonderful person who knows a lot about the Alzheimer disease. And she can enlighten us. She will give us some information. Uh, about events that will come up. You can participate. In fact, you should participate. So for those of you who haven't settled down, this is the time to just relax, have a cup of coffee or whatever, and uh, here we are. My guest today is Linda Alexander Lieblang. She is the director of regions at the Alzheimer Association. Let me welcome to Linda. Thank you, Elka. So nice to Thank have you, you so here. Thank you so much. Uh, I know you came a long way, but uh, <laughs> I know it's worth it. This disease, Alzheimer's disease, is, is such like, I feel like we don't want to talk about it. And uh, a lot of people don't know really anything about it. And I don't know that much about it. So you're the one to fill us in today. But before you start, I want to give the uh, audience just a few statistics. Okay. I find them staggering. They are. They are what I read, the 5.3 million people live with Alzheimer. It's the seventh leading cause of death. That is really a frightening part for me. It is. It's a frightening it, statistic. Exactly. And then there is no current cure. No. Nope. So before we get into all the other, we want to hear about the symptoms, the stages, various stages of the disease. We want to hear about some tests and medication. Tell us a little bit about what is Alzheimer's? Alzheimer's disease is a type of dementia, and it's the number one type of dementia there is. It's the most diagnosed. It is um, for, it's the most diagnosed for 65 and older. And it's irreversible, meaning the symptoms don't go away. It's progressive, meaning it gets worse over time. And it's degenerative. So it attacks the brain cells, and the brain literally starts to shrink. So it's really um, a terrible disease, and we are here to support families and support people with the disease and give them the information that they need. So... Well, you bought a clip, and I, found the I saw the clip, and it's, you know, you, you almost have to see sometimes what's going on in your brain. Visually. And if we can see the clip, it, uh, it helps maybe a little bit. Okay. What is Alzheimer's disease? Alzheimer's is a slow, fatal disease of the brain affecting one in ten people over the age of 65. No one is immune. The disease comes on gradually as two abnormal protein fragments called plaques and tangles accumulate in the brain and kill brain cells. They start here, in the hippocampus, the part of the brain where memories are first formed. Over many years' time, 
the plaques and tangles slowly destroy the hippocampus, and it becomes harder and harder to form new memories. Simple recollections from a few hours or days ago that the rest of us might take for granted are just not there. After that, more plaques and tangles spread into different regions of the brain, killing cells and compromising function wherever they go. This spreading around is what causes the different stages of Alzheimer's. From the hippocampus, the disease spreads here to the region of the brain where language is processed. When that happens, it gets tougher and tougher to find the right word. Next, the disease creeps toward the front of the brain, where logical thought takes place. Very gradually, a person begins to lose the ability to solve problems, grasp concepts, and make plans. Next, the plaques and tangles invade the part of the brain where emotions are regulated. When this happens, the patient gradually loses control over moods and feelings. After that, the disease moves to where the brain makes sense of things it sees, hears, and smells. In this stage, Alzheimer's wreaks havoc on a person's senses and can spark hallucinations. Eventually, the plaques and tangles erase a person's oldest and most precious memories, which are stored here in the back of the brain. Linda, after seeing this clip, I feel like I'm a little bit more aware of where things are happening. Now, we have Alzheimer, we have dementia. What is the difference? Dementia is a broad-based category, just like any other um, diagnosis, like such as cancer. Cancer is a broad-based category, and then there are different types of dementia, okay. different types All of right. cancer. Dementia is the broad-based category. Alzheimer's is a type of dementia. There is vascular dementia as well that's caused by strokes. There are different types, and Alzheimer's is the number one. How do we detect what is what? What are the early stages of what are the symptoms? Well, one of the items that the Alzheimer's Association has worked on with many experts is to create an updated list of 10 warning signs. And the 10 warning signs can be found on the website at www.alz.org. And those 10 warning signs are, and um, they go into more detail, but I'm just going to touch right, on those. Exactly. Memory changes that disrupt your daily life, challenges in planning or solving problems, difficulty completing familiar tasks, confusion with time or place, trouble understanding visual images and spatial relationships, new problems with words in speaking or writing, misplacing things or losing the ability to retrace your steps, decreased or poor judgment, withdrawal from work or social activities, and changes in mood and personality. So those are the top 10 warning signs and I would recommend that people go to the website and review them. They go into much more detail. Right, because as you were counting those, uh, as you were talking about the difference, in the, uh, the, uh, the warning signs, I felt like, oh, I've had that, I've had that, I've had that, that's, that's me. So I think it's really important to go into more detail about the warning signs because with this, we could pretty much all fall into some right. or another category. Right, and it's, it, the difference is um, if you always had trouble balancing your checkbook, Right. Then, then you're always going to have trouble doing that. It's nothing unusual. But it's, and we can go into more of this later oh, too, but it, it's if you forget which bank you bank at. That's a little That's, that's the difference, little right. yes. Or sometimes I get so rattled and confused because I'm running from one end to another. I have, I'm multitasking. My, right. I have to stop myself. And literally the thought comes to me, my God, this is like Alzheimer. You know, now... Uh, and, so, and the more we are multitasking and the more that we are doing things and the more stressors we have in our lives, that plays into the things that we can remember and keep in our brain. So the more things that we can use to help ourselves remember things, yeah. cues, lists, uh, a Palm Pilot, our calendar, those things can help us maintain our memory the way that we used to, you know, when we were younger. Exactly. 
Now, um, what is uh, you said uh, it uh, happens in in your later years, but then, as we know, I mean, there are some. In fact, uh, what Rita Hayworth, she was very young, mm -hmm. wasn't she? Mm -hmm. Like in her fifties or something like that. So you really don't know. And I've also uh, heard of people saying, "Oh, she's just an alcoholic," or, or that sort. Of. What is the age that? It happens. There for the is most part. there. Well, it's there is more likelihood over age sixty-five. However, there are people who've been diagnosed in their thirties. My God. So oh. there there is early onset, and um, the disease acts a little bit differently, but some of the symptoms are the same. And um, as we age, as we normally age, our systems slow down. It, it's just a fact, and. Um, but normal aging does not include um, abnormal changes with our memory. And we may take longer to recall something right. or to retain it, yeah. but um, the ability is still there as you normally age. I mean, we can't do things like we used to when right, we were 20 right, anyway. Right. Nobody runs as fast right. as they used to when they now were that's 20. That's another thing. I say that <laughs> a lot. I said, God, I used to be able to do this and this at, at this speed. What's happening? And you know? not get sore right. exactly. and exactly. tired. And I think that people don't realize the connection between the brain and the body. We tend to think of our brain as separate right. from our physical body. And it, it is a complete part right. of us. Also, nowadays, I mean, we are involved in so much as far as staying young, not only uh, physical appearance. Yes. We uh, go to the gym, we do this, we run, we, I mean, we really, it seems like it's all so much overdoing to stop that aging process. Right. So suddenly the aging process is there and we can't stop it. Right. And we might even get confused. Oh, well, that's because I'm not running anymore. That's because I'm not doing this anymore. And I'm not challenging my brain that's the it. way I used mm -hmm. to. I'm not learning new things. Now, so. uh, what about medication? Well, there are different types of medication that your doctor can prescribe should you be having any of the symptoms. And that's the important thing. I think that we wanted to talk a little bit about early detection. And early detection and diagnosis is so important. It provides the best opportunities for treatment and for support and planning for the future. And your doctor is the one who's going to evaluate you or refer you to a neurologist and get the correct diagnosis. Because there are many reversible types of oh, things that can happen mm -hmm. that could cause dementia. Right. Right. And someone could be dehydrated. Someone could have a urinary tract infection. They could be having medications interacting that's right, causing some right. memory impairment. Right. And so that's why detection and diagnosis of the disease is so important. So there are different drugs on the market to help with different symptoms. It's not a cure. It's just to help with the progression of the disease. I see. Now, um, I, uh, well, you know, we read about Alzheimer quite a bit. And uh, especially when you get the AARP, yes, maybe not you. But. No, we get it at my house too. We get it. I'm actually a member because my husband is. And uh, uh, at one point, I read that, uh, like you said, get the doctor involved. And I read a lot about that too when I uh, um, uh, checked on the website last night. And uh, but I've also read that a lot of these patients resist. You know, they're getting older. They don't want to be labeled with Alzheimer because it's, you know, something you don't want to have. It's like a right. cancer. And uh, that there are actually patients who, when they go to the office, they're just wonderful. They're great. Mm -hmm. And when they come home or go back to their loved ones or whatever, they're totally different people. Right. They're more competitive and uh, belligerent or whatever. Right. And in the doctor's office, they're fine. Now, how does the doctor see through that? And uh, the doctor wouldn't be able to see through that. That's why it's important to have the family involved as well and to make sure that the family is advocating and talking with the person, with the family member that could potentially have the disease. Um, if it's their primary care physician and not specializing in neurology or other types of brain diseases, 
then it's really recommended that somebody see a specialist because they know what they're doing yeah. and they know the questions to ask and, and to spend the time with the person. Now what about research? Do we have what, what's on the horizon? I you know, know there's no cure, which is bad enough. No. But uh, what about keeping it? Well, I'm sure everyone here in California knows about all the budget cuts that we oh. just went through. And Alzheimer's research centers were part of that. So um, we can only hope that we continue to receive funding and that research will continue. We've been advocating for that. Uh, we have research centers at USC and at UCLA and they are continuously doing um, medical trials and that families can take part in but we definitely need research dollars to, to continue that. The amount of research dollars we get compared to other diseases is very small. Yeah. Well talk about research. Um, we need funding. You have an event coming up and I want you to talk about it in great lengths or of importance because this is what I mentioned earlier because I want my guests out there to write these things down because talk about the memory walk. We would definitely like everybody to get involved with memory walk. Hold on one second. I think we have a PSA for the uh, memory walk. Maybe we can uh, come with that first and then um, then we kind of know okay. what's going on at the walk. It's basically like uh, the Susan Coleman Foundation type of walk, most likely like, like a lot of other walks Yes. while he's putting it in. Okay, here we go. We'll see the video. Join us this year for the Alzheimer's Association Memory Walk. It's going to be great! I've never done this before, but these are like the coolest people. Really nice, really nice. We're having a ball. We are Familias Unidas. We are here because we want to bring awareness to the Latino community. I'm a caregiver for my husband who has Alzheimer's, and this is my fourth year that I come for the walk. Well, this is a reminder of how much hope there is that as long as people are still focused on the disease and still fighting the disease and still coming together and raising money and awareness, then the disease hasn't won. And the more of us who get involved, the greater the chance that the hope will actually turn into prevention and maybe even a cure. Hi, I'm Victor Garber. Please join us this year for the Memory Walk. You won't be sorry. Thanks. I'm looking forward to uh, you know being part of the memory walk. Linda, give us some uh, more information on this walk. The memory walk takes place on Sunday, November 1st, and I am unique to the memory walk as I have attended every memory walk since we started right. them in LA since 1993. <gasps> so uh, my husband Terrific. and I were dating at the time, 
and we've gone <laughs> See, to every walk ever since. You have to continue. <laughs> so, and I recommend that people participate. I'm sure that if we took an audience poll, most of the people would know someone who's been touched by this disease. Well, so again, it's very, very important to come to the memory walk because uh, we need research, we need funds, we need this disease to be dealt with. So please, whoever can be there on November 1st, try to come and uh, it's a great, it's a great thing to do for you. It's a fun day, you'll meet a lot of people, you have your friends coming with you, so don't miss it. And you can register online at www.alz.org backslash California Southland. I think there's a memory yeah. walk in well, there Well, Linda too. just mentioned the website, but it's at the end of the credits. Okay. So please register and please do not forget to go. Linda, you had a couple more items you wanted to I just wanted to say that, um, Elka, to, to talk about that you had mentioned the fact that we need the funds for this walk in order to continue research and also to continue the services that we provide in the LA chapter, the California Southland chapter. And we provide a 24-hour toll-free helpline where people can call no matter right. the day or night. And that's 1-800-272-3900. And we also offer support groups. We offer education workshops for people to learn more about the disease. We offer professional training, Medical Alert Safe Return, which is a national database for people who have a tendency to wander so that when they become lost, the family can call in and locate them. And we also do quite a bit of advocacy. And we visit Sacramento. We go to Washington, D.C. and all of the offices keep very well connected with their legislators. Linda, I can't thank you enough for all that information. So uh, uh, all I want is uh, my guests out there, please take it down and uh, be part of it because it is so important. This disease has to be dealt with, as I said earlier. And uh, people like Linda and so many, many more have dedicated their life to just working in the field of uh, this dreadful Alzheimer's disease and dementia. And they want to help, and they want you to be part of it. So if we all get together, I think we probably can make it. We can make a big uh, breakthrough. We, uh, you know, we need all of us to be there. And uh, you were saying you had you wanted to discuss the difference between normal aging. And I did. I wanted to let the audience know because some of the things that you'd asked me in the beginning were when you think about, oh, well, I do those things. Am I getting Alzheimer's disease? Do I have memory loss? And some of the differences are, uh, you know, it's normal to forget where you placed your keys, but I it's, do that. It's <laughs> abnormal to forget what the keys are for. Oh, okay, that's yes. the difference. And it's normal to forget what you ate for breakfast yesterday, but it's abnormal to forget what you ate for breakfast 15 minutes ago. And then my final one, we've all done this, forgetting where you parked your car at the mall. Why? Okay, that's normal. But abnormal is forgetting that you even drove to the mall or that Ooh. you own a car. Oh, oh, Okay, so oh. those are the differences. Are, that's, that's really going far. <laughs> you know, uh, something came to mind while you were saying that. Uh, you know how we try to be active physically and mentally. We go to s maybe evening schools or whatever. Here we had a president, President Reagan, right. who was very active. I mean, you know, to be president of a country, y you have to be kind of be there. Right. Right. And there is this poor man having Alzheimer to such degree at the end. Right. Now, see, that tells me nobody can get away with just saying, oh, I won't get it. Right, I that's won't get very it. true. That's the frightening part. And I think that's why you and uh, everybody, everybody who works who with works you. Everybody else who works for the cause, yes. Oh, God, I mean, it, 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 it's, I, I just think it's wonderful what you're doing, and it's wonderful what you're trying to get people involved in. And uh, uh, God, I have actually so much more to, to ask. What about the people that, uh, the caregivers? The, uh, is there something particular they need to watch out for? Or? The, well, the caregivers, you know, there's been a book written that's the 36-hour day because they never seem to get a break. 
uh, this disease doesn't give them a break. Yeah. They are constantly I taking of care that. of right. the person who has the disease. And um, there are, a, there's a lot of information out there for caregivers. There's support groups. There's early stage programs for people to get involved with. And the most important thing that I hear from families and caregivers is, I was so glad I got to be somewhere where there's people who understand what I'm going through. Right. Mm -hmm. I've heard that, yeah. So that, that's one of the most empowering. And, you know, one of the other things that has been really wonderful that I've seen over the past few years is that people who actually have the disease are speaking out and going to their legislators and telling them, well, I have this disease, what are you going to do about it? Well, the thing is that I think more and more people are facing up to it. And like you said, they are doing something about it, which is so great. Because right. they are the ones that know. Actually, there are people that are writing books. Right, that are going through it. That are going through it until the, the very end, until right. they can't do it anymore. So I think, uh, I think um, there is, a lot is being done. But yet, we need more. We need more funds to find out what's really going on. We do. So, Linda, I want to thank you so much to fill us in. I know we've had just a little bit of time, but uh, <laughs> so much. I mean, the more I go through my papers, and like with the website last night, I didn't even want to go there anymore. And I felt like you're coming in, you'll give us the, the you know, a few uh, one-liners that we all need to know, but mainly talk about the walk again real quick. The walk, Sunday, November 1st in downtown Watercourt, Please be there. Please go to the website and please join us in our race to cure. That's our whole point. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so for much being for having here. me, Elka. And uh, I hope we can talk again with a, uh, with a good message coming up. That's right. And to my guests, please join the memory walk November 1st. And thank you for joining us today. And um, come back to us. We have great topics. If you want to be a guest, come and uh, give me a call and uh, we'll talk about anything but uh, something that's really worthwhile, something that's important to all of us. And until then, bye-bye. This is just, it's, it's so heavy, this subject. It's almost like, my God. Mm -hmm. It's really, when I did the internet last night, I mean, I, you know, it just goes on and mm -hmm. on and on and then, the, like, I look at myself, my God, you know, memory loss, thinking. But the things that you pointed out, that's important. Like you do.